Hey, friends. I guess I shouldn't get too close. I'm an all-natural white girl today. Um, we just had Thanksgiving. And maybe these can give you some ideas uh, of some celebrations. And in, in our neck of the woods, northeast Texas, we... Um, interacted with Native Americans and historically and honestly I don't know a great deal about the tribes other than the Osage Indians um, from my exploration they related to their animals in the area um, not eating them as often as many of the hunters they were a little bit more like gatherers but, um, they did. They did. Uh, it's part of survival. Um, and I may have mentioned before, part of the, they gave kind of a ceremonial blessing over the animal, which is to thank the Holy Spirit for the gift of this, this animal that they're about to consume. And another thing that they did, which I've collected a few, this will be more of a feather from this area. Um, I've collected several because, see, I don't know if you can see the real pretty colors in that one. Maybe I just don't have the lighting great yet. <clears throat> um... When they had their ceremonial feast, they donned their, I don't know if I can get this to work. Oh, I could probably put it there. They donned their full outfit. So, and they also had a ranking within their, their own tribe. <laughs> it looked like some, oh, it's going to look a little bit like some deer antlers. We'll see if we can get a few more in there for you. Um, they, like I said, that was part of their, their dressing up. They didn't do it every day. They typically did have a, in the cooler months, an indoor fire with, uh, the opening, opening of their, theirs wasn't necessarily called a teepee, but, uh, that's kind of what we think of when we talk to our children about, let's see, this, this feather's kind of scruffly. This one actually came from Aki. She's a Brazilian. Um, well, she, they live in the Central America and she's known as a Brazilian green there. We call them a chestnut fronting macaw. And um, so they would don their outfits with their headdress. I don't have a headdress, so I'm kind of like Throwing them up. <laughs> Looks a bit like a turkey. Going around a turkey. All right. So, things about Thanksgiving to teach your your kiddos as you we move into the Christmas season. Um, I'm having a late morning coffee for Christmas. And I love this to get to stir up. I use Sweet and Low or Trivia. Um... So, I'm not sure what they used. If you guys know, put it down in the comments below um, what was normal for this time period. Harvesting a lot of corn with uh, planting fish below the seeds for nutrition did give them a quite a bit of a sweet corn and as a way to kind of sweeten their, their meals. Lots of berries. Lots of berries grow here. Um, the Osage Indians have a reservation, which we would know, or some of our younger, younger generations going to know if they've traveled up from Paris, Texas, um, north, we call that the Indian Nations Turnpike, and it goes through reservation land. Um, so basically the government, which I'm a white girl, so it came from that background, very little Native Americans in my ancestry. Um, there are a few. And they uh, 
the Osages, Osage tribe, which has its reservation near Tulsa. And they, uh, they look very modern. You wouldn't realize that they're uh, a Native American tribe. Many have become quite educated and help with uh, one of the, the big types of going into um, education has been more for like counseling and also like really honoring their parents and their grandparents and spending time with, with them as a way to show them our love and dedication. Um, because in our day and time, a lot of the younger generation doesn't honor their, in, we'll say, the, oh, I'm just losing all the words today. Darn, apparently I should cut this, and I, I didn't plan to do that. So, <laughs> Chicky, Chicky's here. Aki's asleep. They typically sleep midday, sleep a lot at the night, in the nighttime during the winter. If they have too much noise or too, too much sound, they get pretty stressed out. <clears throat> in the natural environment, they would retreat from people and spend more time in the quiet to rest up because they're going to do a lot of hunting, moving, traveling in the warmer um season and in the central america it's uh you deal there with a rainy season which will correspond to our typical winter and or the early winter and then they move into their dry season which when they have more travel that begins um more mid january to around may or june there was some transition time with a morning shower, an evening shower, it keeps everything very lush and green. Then they move into a dry season if they're very far away from the coast, just up in the mountains a little ways. So, um, what, I actually, what I actually meant to share with you was ways that uh, families entertain each other and become more connected at a deeper level so that our older population can share ways to give them ideas to really care about their elders and also that gives us a good chance to invest into their future rather than kind of just rely on our schools to give them sort of the the overview of what the history was like but it'll show them a deeper value of because when they know their relatives participated in this land it makes history come alive for them and um darn the other thing about five years ago and it's still going on some but not during COVID. that's the reason i wanted to give you some a little bit of information with how you can invest yourself in the younger generation um they're not doing the music for hamilton but that tells of an extraordinary grit, drive, uh, passion that Alexander Hamilton moved into after he, he was born in the Virgin Islands in St. Croix. His dad was of Scottish descent. descent. Um, the records show his uh, mother worked to, let's see, how can I word this that's not disparaging? to entertain the travelers that are sailing through the area. They stopped at many of the Caribbean islands. So that is his birth and young adult life. <coughs> <coughs> I guess we need to overlook that part. Um, so, you probably know some about Alexander Hamilton. Um, they got very sick when he was seven. Uh, and his mother died pretty quickly. Moved in with a cousin, relatives took him on. And the cousin that was close to his age committed suicide. So, he had to grow up quick. I think he was nine at that age. 
So began working with a person that owned the landlord who owned the place where his he was born at a shipping port. Um, as he read and studied and got kind of self-educated, he got to move into keeping the books and he learned about the financials and how to become prosperous and how to care about um, the people who worked for them, which some were slaves, uh, some were indentured servants, um, and care about them, watch them, um, also learn about what the, the wealthy class were doing at the time, understand their books and financial situation, which really helped our country in extraordinary ways. So when he began to write what was common for that time period for the upper educated folks, as he self-educated after work, he just, he went into any book he could read. He got into sort of some isolation and studied and, and learned as much as he could. And then he began to write what they call like pamphlets. Um, they advanced them into higher levels of distribution during that time, the British um, that were primarily in charge of the Caribbean, the British Empire had uh, what we would call the New World. Um, they realized that he was extraordinarily bright. He was founded in, he was grounded right into our, the tradition of caring about others, the community that's been taken advantage of. And he also learned the financials of how to handle business and write from the heart, passionate um, information. Now, when they were sharing these, these pamphlets, the problem that was occurring is the British didn't want them to be too highly educated to maintain their rule and control over the that area. Or all of their, they would think of as an investment into the new world to bring them fortunes into what our ancestors found. And one of the ways they did that was to tax, heavily tax paper. May not sound like a big deal, but for communication for people that were pretty far away from your location, it was to write and reach the people who had learned to read. And um, there was a huge backlash on that because a lot of the wealthy did not want that to happen. They couldn't keep a taut rein on what they considered their investments. So they heavily taxed paper. And we, they had been putting together pamphlets, and as the ships went out, sending them out, investing. So with the taxes, they had to go up on the price of the pamphlets. And one of those things is what Alexander Hamilton fell into of seeing that educating others from what he had learned from his struggle with his background, his Scottish father was in debt, and he left, and rarely got to see him. Um, so he was also a unique person in St. Croix in the Virgin Islands because most of the population was African American and working for the Caucasian American. So another situation was that his, I don't know if I should say white privilege, but having that stature in the community and not having that education helped him learn to uh, explore all of those avenues. And then he got to work for his the landlord, and like I said, they put him in charge of the financial situation there. So um, once he began to produce these, they actually took up a collection on the island. They was like saying, this guy has the information. He has the heart and the soul, and he knows how to build relationships. He knows how to help people become financially stable and help them to strive into growing and 
really becoming an asset to society. And so they financed his way to what we would call the mainland and got him into New York and to finance his college. So he went to what was then King's College, um, which was set up for the Kings and the descendants that were known as Blue Bloods. You may hear some of that today. Um, that was a, the top-notch place. There were quite a few boys prep schools for those children, and they ushered them into King's College to learn about continuation of traditions and customs. So when he got in there and became an attorney, he was looking for using what his was in his heart and soul to help people, which became what our country, as the founding father, stood on is immigrants um, from all over the world, embracing them, giving them the path to become productive and helping lead them into a very happy life to be able to afford to take care of their family and educate themselves. So um, I'm saying all this to remind you that as we move into the holiday season with COVID on our backs, we have been advised by many of our leaders from the basic scientist, scientific medical community to try not to intermingle with too many folks. And part of our tradition in the present day is to bring all the family in, make lots of pies, get things ready. My Mima Ray was just extraordinary at this. And just a lot of love and understanding for each other and then realize they've got to go back out wherever they are and work and make a living and become a productive, happy person so that they could come back and help their elder elders and their um, aging population. So Thanksgiving has taken on a new meaning. And as time goes on with electronics and how kids don't, often don't have that foundation of doing projects, learning some self-control and self-discipline and the pride that the honest kind of pride that you develop as you become a, a person, a young person who has some skills and has some education, then um, we're going to look at some ways that we can do that during the holidays. I have gone way over time. I did not plan, you folks remember, I did not plan, I like to keep myself to a five minute, maybe up to 10 minutes, and this one is going over, so I like to do one take, no, I don't want to do a whole lot here, and um, just kind of give you some tidbits. Now, if you find any of this information um, incorrect in your view, disparaging, in your view, or if it's something that you really like, subscribe to my channel as we go along, and I'll share some of the ways of getting back into organic farming, even just in your own backyard. You will be extraordinarily amazed at how much a few seeds produces and how that multiplies through the years. It's, it's very exciting, and it's a good activity for your kids, too. To put down electronics as parents you know that we have to set those limits and for my son um it was fun i played some video games with him we we had a great time but we stopped it we did not go over like an hour on holidays he had some extra time we just didn't go over that occasionally he would have a little spurt later in the evening if he had some friends hanging out, yeah, they'd have a little fun, and, and that's good. That's good to let them challenge their mind and get a little competitive. They're going to need that to move forward in life, to have some level of competitiveness in their nature, and that's going to be a part of their success. So I want to wish you well during the upcoming season. I hope just for our nation's sake, it may not feel like a big deal to you, but I really hope that you can um, keep your gatherings smaller, 
You can spend as much time outdoors. An open shop, their wood shop, turned out to be a an amazing place um, to allow them to demonstrate their skills. So, uh, yeah. Hopefully that's some ideas. I know this is not funny and crazy like some of the YouTube videos that gets all the attention, but I'm more interested in investing in your soul, investing in your family, the way that you're going to move forward to give them those foundational tools that make a difference. And putting those tools into action is really the heart of it. <clears throat> so, you've been given some extra time. Go ahead and look at COVID as being um, one of those ways that you can take time with the family. Have fun. Do some games. Also, make sure you're throwing in tidbits of information as you go. Let them challenge you. That's another thing. Um, I really like to allow them to show me if they feel like I'm wrong. Go for it. Come on. Come on. Tell me. Tell me how I'm wrong. Keep telling me. Help them kind of map out their ideas and see where they're coming from on that. And um, don't be afraid of criticism. I know when we're with family, it's easy to say, oh, I want you to be this way. I really want you to be this way and go down this path. But they're their own unique human being, and they're going to explore paths that, that they they choose as they get older. Allow them those choices. You can still guide them and ground them in any choices that they're making to become successful and happy, productive um, citizens that will make an impact in others' lives. I think this is gonna sum it up. It obviously went a little bit long. Um, I hope you have a a blessed and happy um, holiday season. It looks like our schools are going to be out for a while. Enjoy those kiddos. If you need neighbors to to pitch in and kind of help out, um, just reach out. And we're going to make it through this together. Togetherness and not being divided is our key and our soul and our lifeline. All right. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Woo!